Yes, my very first video on this topic was shared, I think, eight months ago, where I shared ideas on how to make these epic images with flowing dresses, flying fabrics. This is part two, eight months later. Yeah, I've waited some time before releasing that video because I needed to gain experience, I needed to test, fail and succeed. And for the success part, I think I'm not quite there yet. From short, medium long or long flowing dresses to huge, epic flying fabrics, what I love about creating these images is the dynamic and the sense of movement that it adds to the overall image. So what did I learn in eight months? What you have to keep in mind is the fact that you will get, you will often get random results with the dresses or the flying fabrics. You will try your best to control it. The bigger the fabric, the more unpredictable it will be. You can add to this the fact that I'm personally working with dancers and you're on the road to a memorable headache. Finding the right pose, the, the one where the dancer, the performer feels comfortable and where the fabric or the dress doesn't get in the way because yes, it will often will get in the way. Um, finding the perfect timing where you have the perfect pose and at the same time, the desired movements or form or shape with the fabric. Yes, all this, all this can be fun, but it also can be nerve wracking. And let's not talk about lighting at them in the mix because I'm working with strobes. <sighs> this becomes a nightmare. So basically, this is how I do it. You simply have to break it down. First, you decide where, choose your framing and lock it. I always, almost always use a tripod and I'll tell you why later. Number two, talk to your model, explain to her or to him where you will be placed, the type of movement you want, the way the fabric should behave, the space it will take in the frame, and so on. Then I kind of show or suggest the type of movement or pose that I want my model or performer to do, um, the direction of the whole body, where she or he has to look. Starting from there, now you have at least two or three movements or poses to work with and you can start rehearsing with the dress or fabric in movements. This is especially necessary if you're working with the team, with the crew. If people are manipulating the fabric, you have to find the perfect timing. Once you have your movement, your pose, once your crew is ready, your timing is right, you have rehearsed a few times, you can now check all the details, check for the last time your lighting. I really recommend you work tethered. I think I made a video about that. And finally, shoot. And yes, don't worry, you will make multiple attempts because chances are you won't get it the first time. I said it earlier, I work with a tripod and I do so for very good reasons. For example, when you work in tight spaces, a lot of things can get in the way. It could be your tripod, your tripod, sorry, your lights. It can be your assistants, it can be you know, his hand, his arms, his head, his anything can get in your frame. I think you get it. Can you move a little bit more on the side? Right there. Can you move? Uh, look uh, somewhere uh, above okay. the camera. Not the camera, just the above camera. it. Yeah. Okay. And go. And go. Oops. Yes. A little more on this side. Stop. Yeah. Too far. Come back. And go. Cool. Yes. So it's really simple. Once I get my shots, I ask everybody to move out of the frame, move out of the scene, and I take a clean plate, a clean shot of the same exact scene on my tripod so that I can save a lot of time in post-production and erase all the undesired elements that was captured in my frame. There's another link for you in the description box below. People often ask me what kind, what type of fabrics, 
of fabric do I use on some of my images? I cannot give you an answer to that question because it will depend on your project, depending on the, the length, uh, the type of fabric, and um, the weight of it, it will give you a different look. If you want crease-free fabrics, for example, you will prefer um, a nylon synthetic polyester type of fabrics. If you're using cotton, it's lighter, a little bit easier to manipulate, but you will have wrinkles on your fabric. So it's really a matter of taste. But if you don't want your dress or your fabric to be too perfect, if you don't mind having a little bit of wrinkles on your cloth, on your fabric, if you want to shop, Photoshop them out during several hours and post, you can go for cotton-based fabrics. When I first used fabrics in my photography, I wanted to make it all in one take and not having to manipulate the image heavily in post. I sort of changed my mind recently. It's really not hard to do. First, you capture the pose or the movements, and then independently you capture your fabric in movements. You take all your pictures and post and combine them in Photoshop. <laughs> The big advantage of this is that you have more options and more flexibility to bring your vision to life. There is no right way to do it. I kind of like both methods. You can even do a mix of the two. The thing is, the second method using Photoshop and combining all of the images in posts, well, it gives you the ability to make images that will be impossible to make in one take. Or maybe if you have a lot of money and a huge crew with you. All the fun is in finding a solution to a creative problem, which is something that I love. I'm not there yet. I said it before, I'm not really satisfied with the type of image that I create with fabric. So this means that there will be a part three, maybe in six or eight months. I think it will be at the end of this year. So be sure to check that one out. So are you planning on using fabrics or flowing dresses in your future work? And if you already do, tell me how you do it yes tell us in the comments below sorry for not posting any videos two weeks ago i had a little problem with that computer uh yeah i'm working with a pc a dell computer that is three years old hmm. maybe time for me to switch to apple again thanks for tuning in again this week i hope you enjoyed this week's video please be sure to subscribe to this channel if you haven't already and give me the little thumbs up too to support the man. Please join me on Instagram to know where I am right now and what I am currently working on. I'm wishing you all a fantastic Sunday. And of course, I will see all of you guys next week on this channel, but until then, please have a good one.